Hello everybody, welcome to Coronaphobia Day 6. And in case you were wondering, yes, I got the day wrong yesterday. Apparently, I'm a little foggy-headed from all this coronavirus I'm experiencing. No, I am here to tell you that I do believe that uh, my wife, my driver, and I have exposed ourselves to the coronavirus and probably are experiencing symptoms at this point, relatively mild. And we're going to get into all of that today. Sam is here with us. Uh, got a lot of headlines to cover. Got a very packed show today. We are going to get into the graphic of flattening the curve and what it really means to flatten the curve of tyranny, which is so important here. Do I have a Sharpie? I am, I'm going to need a black Sharpie. We're going to, we're going to add to this graphic. It's going to be very exciting. Um, but uh, we're going to take your comments. We want to know if there are people. There's one in the... In the, in the um, pouch there so we we are taking comments we want to know if anybody else is experiencing symptoms what it feels like and in the case with uh, well this is the this is the blue one um, in what we're experiencing here and how it relates to testing with uh, we see today Los Angeles has decided finally now they're not even going to try to test people and we know that this is something that's gotten out of control way beyond anything that could be contained by quarantine or self-quarantine or isolation or any of the restrictions imposed by government right now so uh, for us it's been kind of interesting it's, it's a it's a funky little flu and we are pretty confident that we were exposed at some point going to state conventions. We've been going to libertarian state conventions all the way up until they started the lockdown, including Illinois, which was, was it just last Friday and Saturday? Was it only a week ago that we were in Illinois? Yeah, it seems like, it seems like it's been a lot longer than that. Um, and we were in Michigan Sunday and, and Monday and, and had a lot of fun and started this series of press conference style Facebook Lives in uh, our friend's living room in uh, the Detroit area. So, uh, Clay Arno, only symptom I am suffering from is boredom, been at home a month. Wow, all right. Uh, Blade and Isles, are we heading for a new Great Depression? I hope it doesn't get to that point, although that, that is a reasonable fear. Certainly, we have much more to fear from the government's interventions and the economic repercussions than anything with the uh, virus itself. All right, I'm already getting made fun of here. Jeanette, the licking doorknobs were, you know, just getting out, doing our normal thing. And, and I do think that uh, this is, is really going to... Um, I'm sorry, now I'm distracted by other comments here. Um, but no, this is, this is, uh, this is going to get out to everyone. Stephen Powell, are you going to make TikTok fitness videos? I was thinking about it. I did a, a little TikTok from the gym the other day. I don't know if people really want to get into that on TikTok, following me working out. John Olivadotti Jr., thank you so much for joining us from Florida. I was going to say something yesterday, but you really do look like shit, pale and shit. Um, <clears throat> do I look pale, babe? Is it not in per is it, maybe it's just the lighting yeah. now now I look really pale oh my god my coronavirus just got 10 times worse I have I, I feel I feel I feel pale and okay no I'll put the lights back where they were and actually that gets to uh, you know the really serious point that I want to make about sharing what it's like and and diffusing this and making it uh, less of a big deal making sure that we don't have an, an overloaded healthcare system in this legitimate health crisis that we don't we don't downplay this uh, too much to the point where people aren't saying uh, that, that we have to at least be conscientious of what we're doing and one of the problems now is that there is so much uh, fear and hype and hysteria around this that anybody with a case of the sniffles is going to be going, oh crap, I need to go in and get tested. And what was the headline we just saw? Los Angeles, is it city of Los Angeles or county of Los Angeles? Just said they're not even going to try testing people anymore, that it's, it's futile at this point, and they're not going to test people unless it would change how they're going to be treated. So if you come in to an L.A. area hospital with symptoms now and you say, hey, can you test me for corona? They're going to say, well, what are your symptoms? What are you dealing with? Well, we're going to treat you the same way anyway, so we're not even going to bother testing you. So it's really going to come down to just the extreme cases that are even going to get tested at this point. So... To uh, our experience specifically here with Sam and, and David and myself, we, um, you know, okay, so I, I pointed this out yesterday. We only found out the day before 
that 50% of coronavirus cases involve gastrointestinal symptoms, upset stomach, um, gas, and uh, and diarrhea type symptoms. And you know, I had been experiencing some of that. Although you know, I have seasonal allergies too. I get little bouts of uh, you know hay fever sometimes. Uh, you know, sniffly, congested for a few days. You know, and then I take some some over the counter allergy meds and I'm fine. Uh, you know, maybe. Um, you know, may, maybe people are, 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 you know, because the symptoms are so mild overall, they're going to be confusing things like that for, for coronavirus. So I don't know if we have it. I'm pretty sure we've been exposed from how we were getting around. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, certain that there were certain people who were around other people who are around, like, and this was going around for, uh, you know, a month <coughs> before the alarm really took off in the United States. So there's, there's Sam. Sorry. coughing no the very appropriate helping me transition to uh the things we actually want to talk about here in terms of the symptoms that we're experiencing so i had uh a little bit a little bit of diarrhea creeping in wasn't sure if it was anything out of the norm you know when you travel as much as we do when you're eating out at weird places you never know if you're if you're going to eat something that that bothers you a little bit uh but then yesterday I was feeling uh, a little more uh, of a sort of overall tiredness and achiness, and I have a, a, just a bit of a sore throat. I don't, I don't think I have a significant cough yet, uh, but I did have, uh, you know, a kind of flu-like just body ache. Again, very mild. There's one distinct part of this though, and I wonder again if anybody else is experiencing symptoms. Please comment right now. Sam is watching the comments and writing down anybody who's being interesting and not trolling. We're not going to get trolled like we did yesterday, but the one. <laughs> One thing that is, uh, is is really distinct in this is is that it's kind of a lower back pain mm -hmm. that, that both Sam and I have been yeah. experiencing that was a little a little weird, a little distinct. You know, I did go to the gym yesterday and do legs, um, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't from that. So maybe uh, maybe that's something that we're going to see coming out as a trend with this. Uh, Sam also had a significant fever. Not even enough that we went and it was like, oh, we need a thermometer. It was just, hey, you're a little feverish, you know, very, relatively mild fever. Um, I was, uh, you know, a little warm for, uh, I think, a little while last night, but not even, uh, not even like, yeah, well, it, it just, it's just when you're paranoid, when you're super sensitive, oh, uh, is, is my forehead a little warm? I don't Oh, maybe it's, is it, is it, is it this, is it that? Oh, do I need to go in and get tested? You know, that's what's going to do more harm than good right now certainly with the hysteria oh so we already have someone commenting here uh well okay ben farmer my old friend oh you always have lower back pain this is true kind of a nagging thing for my time in the marines and rugby and all the other things i've put my body through but you know this is i, I will say ben this this lower back pain is distinct and joe sepp just commented my buddy got the lower back pain too so maybe that is a feature of this virus maybe it's not we don't know um so sam before we get into the headlines, do we have any other interesting comments from people sharing symptoms or experiences right yeah, now? Um, I can't, let's see, it's already gone on my uh, how quick they delete live, but a couple people have also mentioned knowing people who have had lower back pains and their friends experiencing the same thing with cold and flu symptoms. Um, my favorite comment so far is Ben Farmer going, let me into the main debates or I'll lick all your doorknobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, I think, I'm sitting here giggling. Yeah. No, we, we have considered all of the political implications of this. Oh, and I should know the numbers. Trump is what, 73, 74, and Biden is something like 77, 78. So, Someone in Pence's cabinet tested positive, so Pence himself is pos uh, possibly positive. As Definitely well. exposed, yeah. So Definitely Vice President exposed. has been exposed, President has been exposed. And now, ab about this hysteria over the death rates, uh, does anybody know how many people die in the United States on a normal day? Just 330 million people running around. How many of them die on a normal day? And I gotta give Daniel Hayes props for bringing this to my attention. There is a death clock counter for the United States. And it's something like 7,500 people die right now on an average day in the United States. And I hope that puts these statistics into perspective in terms of the death threat. But what we saw is that, you know, like if, if you were, uh, you know, young and healthy or, or, or just young, you know, it's almost negligible uh, death risk. And then it, and it creeps up as, as you get to, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s. 
And I, I was just talking to my mom about this. And hey, I encourage everybody, call your parents, call your mom, talk to your mom, make sure she's doing okay. Um, again, more because of the you know economic logistical upheaval that we're experiencing rather than the health but that they have and make sure that everybody you know who's elderly or immunocompromised knows to take appropriate precautions to self-isolate as necessary or uh you know up their sanitation their hygiene game but like we like i said we just saw this article from uh the woman in charge of the effort in new jersey for their government at least saying yeah everybody's gonna get it i'm 71 i'm not really worried it's probably gonna be very mild for me so to that to that point of the the, the death curve spiking up i feel a little bit silly uh maybe not silly but just overly precautious saying check on your old people even because it's the kind of thing that it's only going to be a problem for people who really are on on the edge of, of death anyway. And I don't say that uh, in any way to be unsensitive or insensitive, but actually to focus effort on those people. We make sure that, uh, that that healthcare resources are able to go to those who need it. I mean, the more the more I look at the numbers, though, the more I, I feel like this is going to be uh, corrected statistically very shortly here and that people are going to be upset people are going to be pissed like very soon here the uh, right now we're afraid most people most Americans are afraid uh, to a certain degree although I, I do want to point out a couple statistical things that were very interesting in terms of the effect what are we ready to do in a time of crisis measure partisan opinion uh, the, one of the surveys I, I read said that because of Trump's uh, or earlier downplaying of this, 60% of Republicans plan on going about their lives as normal, 30% of Democrats. So only 40% of Republicans and 70% of Democrats are scared enough by this to avoid gatherings. But right now, we're generally more scared than angry. And, 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 and I'm, I'm very confident one way or another, over the next week, the curve of fear is going to come down and the curve of anger is going to go up. And when those lines cross, we're going to come to a very interesting inflection point and there is going to be a huge amount of backlash against the way that government has been handling this and the economic sacrifices. The best analogy that I've heard describing this is that it's like an elephant getting attacked by a house cat and then panicking and jumping off a cliff trying to swat the house cat away. Now, that's a great analogy, but it's a little a little morbid, uh, you know, perhaps a, a little intense. I don't think we're killing ourselves. We're not killing the economy. Uh, we, we might be slowing it down. Certainly we are slowing it down in a lot of destructive ways that is going to really hurt people. I mean, even today, just now saw the headline that uh, people's diets are going to shit because before they had, uh, you know, more access to, 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 to fresh produce and now they're turning to um, non-perishable goods. A lot of people are eating cookies and popcorn and stuff like that. Yeah, there's going to be a wave of negative health impacts from this that at some point we're going to see were completely unnecessary. So to the elephant in the house cat analogy, you might say, well, the elephant is all of society and we're getting attacked by a virus that is akin to a house cat attacking an elephant and we're panicking and jumping off the cliff to our death by overreacting. Now, I would like to unpack this uh, metaphor a little bit because I think there's a more uh, accurate way of looking at this that still preserves the core narrative of it. The elephant, first of all, is not all of society. It's all of society who is being subjugated to the fear mongering. It's all society that's not taking advantage of. So it's not the politicians. It's not the financial manipulators. It's not the real string pullers in society. It's those of us who are vulnerable to this. And I, I would say especially people in the service industry right now who are feeling the economic pain more than anyone else, most being out of jobs right now. And I will say, please go support your local businesses if you can, if you have the funds. Go out, be engaged, spend money, get takeout, go to drive throughs don't just sit at home and, and, and stay economically isolated. Go out, participate, especially in the local economy as much as possible. Tip generously. So if, if this is the elephant, those of us who are subject to these manipulations from you know, the, the rest of the, 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 the string pullers in society, it's more like we're an elephant being attacked by a house cat and there's a bird on our shoulder going, hey man, you should panic. Hey, that that house cat's gonna kill you. Hey, you better run in that direction. And then we fall off the cliff 
but it's not really a cliff it's really just an embankment we fall down and the house cat is shaken off and you know we have some bumps and bruises and broken bones the elephant survives we're gonna be okay and we're gonna be really pissed off at the bird afterwards and I hope that there is enough of an awareness in this to have some real uh, positive whiplash effect against government power that there's more of an awakening from this than than anything else I, I think that's gonna happen there are some people who are throwing out some really crazy conspiracies and you know I, don't, I think it's too early to even weigh in on any of them when we can see there's such a, a fog of war because now we have a wartime president with cadet bone spurs in the White House declaring a national state of emergency and invoking the Defense Procurement Act of 1950 in order to better artificially redistribute resources with government's pension for inefficiency but in this situation uh, when we are you know in in this fog of war and, and there is a fog of, of, of misinformation and bad reporting around this I would really call it the fog of a socialized healthcare system the fog of government that is really clouding up the situation as, as we see it today and there is a conspiracy happening in the open to, to take advantage of this, to rip us off, uh, to socialize. Donald Trump is a socialist, and he is really allowing his true socialist colors to fly now with the proposal to nationalize major corporations, bail them out, and have the government take stock in them. Nationalization of industry. Just playing out in the open. So... Um, I want to make sure that people are aware of this. I want to keep doing these live streams. I want to stay active on social media. One way or another, um, the three of us here and, and everybody else on our campaign team is going to be posting up somewhere for uh, the next few weeks. I do believe it's going to last that long at least. And, and certainly for us now doing a... We're, we're, so uh, I suppose, have there been any questions about what we're going to do and, and, and whether or not we're going to get tested, things like that in the chat? I should finish yeah. covering this. Um, people are asking if we're going to self-quarantine. Mm -hmm. And then, um, let's see, Nick asked, what would President Adam Kokesh do to contain this virus? Okay, well, first of all, in terms of our situation, we're, well, we're, we're going to do kind of a soft self-quarantine. You know, it's not really worth uh, going out of your way or cramping your general lifestyle in anything more meaningful than taking appropriate precautions to make sure you're not spreading whatever it is that you have to people who don't have it. Although it does seem like with its, its airborne and viral nature, it's going to be getting out. Uh, people are accepting that everybody's going to get exposed at this point. So it is kind of futile. But we don't want to accelerate that. We don't want to be unnecessary carriers. We don't want to be transmitting it to people who, who might be immunocompromised, who might not know. So um, no shaking hands for two weeks. We'll be doing the elbow bump or fist bump thing, uh, you know, being careful to cover our mouths and sneeze into our elbows, you know, for things like that. Yeah, it's um, we we're, we're, yeah, stuff that we normally do, <laughs> just stepped up just a little bit. I wish I could say we're still going to gatherings but it looks yep. like that's not happening uh the, 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 we don't even and have the choice so uh you know i've been asked a couple times now what would you do if you were president in a situation like this well first of all my entire platform is based on me not being president and dissolving the federal government through a peaceful orderly responsible bankruptcy that leaves us with 50 independent states and up to 562 sovereign native nations. And we've already seen in so many ways with this crisis that we would be better off with a localized response. If there's a local community that is able to quarantine, they would be able to do that if they had the authority and the autonomy to be able to do that. Also, we'd have much more transparency and accountability in the flow of information around this with government localized, without the corruption of the federal government, the ability of the economy to be centralized and manipulated the way that we're seeing right now would not be an issue and what I would be recommending if this were to happen in the middle of the bankruptcy process is simply that we make sure we stay cool calm and collected that we you know I, I do believe generally in, in the flatten the curve concept uh, you know of, of, of lessening the impact of this possibly avoiding some kind of uh, you know crunch in the healthcare system coming later on and uh, you know make sure that we have the ability to take care of people who might need it in this crisis, people who are, are you know, immunocompromised or elderly, elderly, being able to go in and get medical care and make sure that the uh, the market is able to, uh, you know, spread the information and reallocate resources to meet needs as, as efficiently as possible and just keep the government as out of it as possible. So if, if, if I had, uh, you know, the platform, I would just be encouraging conscientiousness, encouraging people to respond intelligently as, as I think that we are. 
are and to uh, you know make sure that we go about our daily lives without compromising our ability to, to take care of people and that's 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 the real uh, or one of the p real potential tragedies with this. Let's say it is you know one percent of the population that, that all of a sudden you know with it relatively quickly within within a couple months time of this virus spreading need ventilators need intensive care. Well, if the rest of us are freaking out and not engaging in the economy and you know infrastructure starts to crumble and hospitals get overwhelmed, well that one percent they're really not going to be able to get the care they need. And as as president, if I had that bully pulpit at least that I would have as the uh, custodian of the federal government as the one carrying out this bankruptcy process. I, I, I would just make sure that the focus stay uh, on, the, on the people who really need that care and, and keeping the rest of the economy strong. So, on that note, Dan wow, lots of comments. Thank you so much. I Yeah, more than I can keep up with here. Sam is on it. Daniel Black asked, how would this situation be different if it happened in the middle of the bankruptcy process the federal government needs to go through? How would this be different? Well, if, if we start the bankruptcy, I mean, if we elect someone on uh, on uh, on this platform, whoever it may be, then um, it means that they resign on day one, and the constitution of the federal government uh, is declared null and void. All federal laws stop being enforced. So immediately, the federal government's ability to interfere with a uh, you know community-based, market-based response would would be uh, would would just wouldn't be there. And so we'd have a much better situation without that interference. I, I don't think there's. Uh, I mean, the less government is able to interfere with people responding rationally uh, to this, the, the better off we are. So if the federal government essentially you know, loses its ability to interfere, we're all going to be a lot better off. And we, we could keep going all the ways, but the big ones are, you know, information being readily available for people to make decisions without the fear and uncertainty and not interfering with the, uh, you know, the economy and not ordering uh, a state of emergency or a lockdown or, or anything like that that uh, limits our ability to deal with this. Tommy asks, do you think martial law is coming? Do I think martial law is coming? Well, what we're experiencing right now is a sort of soft martial law, partial martial law, where we only see in limited areas and cities that they're able to uh, to have any kind of enforcement of lockdowns, although we do see mobilizations of National Guard troops. And the excuse there is, well, they need to be able to mobilize medical resources and, and, and set up field hospitals and get ventilators out there where you know people who aren't part of the military can have access to them and that's that's sort of a legitimate response i hate to call it a market response but if society has those resources that they go to this that's a good thing is this a cover for something else does this get troops on the street possibly but i highly doubt that this is sufficient uh, of an excuse to actually have a real crackdown on martial law and what i've been posting and encouraging people in, in all my social media to do is to uh, resist martial law. Don't let them shut down your business. If you need to take uh, you know appropriate precautions, and you don't need to be arrogant about this or thumb your nose at them uh, because that's going to piss people off who are frightened still, but just to be cool, calm, and collected and say, look, uh, I'm going to keep my business open. I'm, I'm not going to be frightened into shutting down. Uh, it's going to hurt people more, and I will do the right thing over the legal thing. And like like uh, like Boober eats, uh, the story we covered yesterday of uh, the Lucky Devil Strip Club in Portland, Oregon, with their workaround, they were going to be shut down as a strip club. So they said, "Well, now we're a food delivery service. Boober eats. We're going to deliver food." Uh, I think that kind of soft civil disobedience. I hate to use that term. Um, it's, it sounds it sounds a little funny to me even, but in the face of soft tyranny, soft civil disobedience is appropriate. And it's important that we do it with a smile on our face, and we do it with a good sense of humor, and a, a sense of just positive defiance. A anything else or uh, burning from the chat before we get to the headlines? Um, nothing so far that we haven't covered. All right, so. What do we have for headlines we need to get into today, babe? Trump considering national quarantine. Trump considering national quarantine. So this gets us uh, back to our, our graphic here of, of the, the curve of, of, of tyranny or martial law, right? Uh, and, and it's really not so much a, a, a yeah, it might, it might have an acceleration. Uh, I, I hope we can turn a corner and have a deceleration like this here. 
I don't think he's going to get away with, with a national lockdown at this point. I don't think people are going to go along with it. That would represent kind of an acceleration, getting us towards the, the, the very frightening possibility of um, uh, a uh, mandatory vaccine kind of situation. And I, I don't think they're going to get away with that. I don't think it's possible. I, I hope I'm not being too optimistic. Um, I'm obviously still being being very cautious and keeping an eye on things. And again, spreading the message, we need to flatten the curve of tyranny. And I, and I do have one other thing that's a, a, a very important point for the, the long term in this uh, to make sure that we don't go that way. Uh, what's next? Well, I would ask, what do you think is going to happen with truckers and delivery services if there's a national quarantine, auto parts, mechanics, um, and the like? Yeah, so about the national quarantine thing, I don't think they're going to get away with it because they've already got this, well, we need to keep essential services going as, as, as one of their premises. And so they're never going to be able to shut down <coughs> trucks, grocery stores hospitals obviously and then with that you go well what about auto parts stores you know what about mechanics if we have yeah. to keep all those things of food delivery if garbage we, trucks. you know garbage just like and eventually go well can't we come up with a workaround for everything so i i don't think it's going to go that way i i i hope again i hope i'm not being overly optimistic but i i really doubt that uh that the, the, yeah. it, it's that it, it, like already truckers are feeling a bit of the pinch. We covered this day before yesterday, and uh, they they they've been pushing back. I think there's more pushback to all of these unnecessary measures than than we've we've ever seen. I think the internet and, and to, to all of you in the audience, thank you so much for tuning in. And these videos have been doing very well, at least better than, than anything we've ever had uh, on Facebook Live where we know we're, we're, we're heavily shadow banned. So it really, you know, getting people involved in this more reasoned, rational conversation than what's happening in the mainstream media is more important now than ever before. So thank you so much, everybody. Oh, look at all the hearts. Thank you so much for tuning in and, and for sharing these videos. It really means a lot to me and I think to everybody who's able to get uh, you know this this message that that's just you know at least directing the hysteria in the right direction we should be you know vigilant to uh, government overreach in times like this as, as more than anything else next headline so the biggest one I do want to touch down on is that there's a new report by cybersecurity of hackers are selling malware with the discounted code of coronavirus or COVID-19 and there are a few corona map uh, fake coronavirus maps that are out there that are stealing your information from your phone that they've created now Ooh, very good note thank you so much Sam for that everybody needs to be especially vigilant during this time in terms of taking care of your digital hygiene and making sure that you're not going to strange websites or giving away your password watching your credit card where you're putting your information things like yes. that and and it makes sense you know I hadn't considered this Sam because I was thinking about the physical looters and I, I've been kind of surprised that we haven't heard more of that I am I would guess that this is a suppressed story that we're going to see more of in uh, the sort of hindsight reporting. Yeah. Uh, and it started, and I don't want to call this looting because in a sense it's legitimate re reclamation of abandoned property when we see the homeless people now saying, hey, look, we don't have reasonable shelter to just stay healthy. You know, homes. fuck you, government of L.A., L.A. County, all these government, you know, owned homes we're just going to occupy them i think that's great um uh, in terms of looting uh, i i i would expect we'd see more of this i just saw actually on tiktok the first big example there was a guy uh in california recording in and i think a cvs uh a, a gentleman uh with a big bag just like throwing things off the shelf into his bag and and and, and taking off because it's uh and the comment was well because uh the government of california made it legal to steal you know 950 dollars or less than they get to um you know they're, they're, it's like they don't prosecute or, or something like this so that you know that kind of theft 
is 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 running rampant i would think there would be more reports of that but i wonder if it's the mainstream media actually trying to downplay that to discourage it it's sort of this you know nanny state media thing having that effect i would i wouldn't be surprised at all to later find out also that government officials have directed media outlets to not report on the looting because they don't want that to get out of control um well i'm going to respond to a couple comments could you get the battery pack for me at this point and see if we can get some more juice in this so we can make it through the hour with this phone we're getting low yes i was looking at aaron's quote reports of roaming looters and cause costume claiming they are testing you to get you to open the door well that wouldn't be i think when we say looting um and and please correct me if i if i'm wrong anyone here but when we talk about looting we're, we're talking about uh people stealing property that's that's not protected if someone is you know tricking you into opening your door and getting into your home you know uh th- there's going to be a little more of a confrontation there that's oh, th- th- getting more to burglary um possibly even armed robbery if if, if you're uh if they're you know getting you to open the door and then burglarizing your home with you right there so chase oliver points out also be careful to look for scam phishing emails i just got two in my work inbox this week alone uh tara l as we navigate the practicalities of protecting the most vulnerable among us many many of us have to be mindful about how many rights and liberties we are willing to sacrifice in order to keep us safe many times rights we give up now will not be restored later which uh, is the perfect transition for how I would like to update this infographic that I think is really important now if someone wants to make uh, a more professional version of this uh, I welcome you to do it so uh, I, I hope that you're paying attention all my graphic artist friends out there because this is the new version of flatten the curve that's really important that we get out there to make sure that people understand the threat of the long-term effects of martial law economic downturn and giving government power because governments don't take on power with the intention of relinquishing it that's not how governments work so first of all this graph is uh in in one sense on the vertical scale how many coronavirus cases we have right and on the horizontal scale of course this is time so we have the popular graphic getting around that shows look if we don't control the spread of coronavirus we're going to have a spike in cases because it's going to get out to pretty much everybody it's going to come down and it's going to cross this imaginary line here where demand on the healthcare system becomes overwhelming and people who need treatment can't get it we run out of hospital beds we run out of ventilators we run into this problem and so we need to flatten the curve and and make it look more like this so we never hit this dramatic of a spike in cases of course this could all be accomplished not with lockdowns not with shutdowns not with closing businesses not with martial law not with government mandates but just a little extra conscientiousness with personal hygiene with not social distancing but physical distancing this term social distancing is a really dangerous misrepresentation of what they're trying to describe with this term it's not distancing yourself socially it's distancing yourself physically and if anything if we're in isolation we need to make sure that we're making an effort to stay more connected call your parents I just got off the phone with my mom before doing this had a great conversation help them calm down put things in perspective be connected go out and be sociable even just don't shake hands do the elbow bump you know cover your mouth sneeze into your elbow wash your hands a lot and you know except for the handshake thing I'd be doing all of this anyway make sure that your self-care game is on point that you're getting plenty of rest that you're eating whole healthy foods not turning to junk food in the time of isolation and self quarantine so that is a really important distinction in flattening this curve while not exacerbating the economic impact we think of this not as social distancing but physical distancing so I want to separate another curve on this chart which is obviously these uh, these straighter lines here that we see these are the lines of government tyranny the increasing of government power socialism the power grabs that we see happening at all levels of government today and unlike the virus they will not subside on a natural curve they are going to stick around and if you think about this the economic impact instead of it uh, you know hey it's just gonna subside and things get back to normal and we get back to full productivity no 
just where we've gone already this represents this thick line here and this point here this is roughly where we are now that there has been a sudden increase in government power in printing money and in increasing liquidity through the federal reserve system and we're at this point now with lockdowns all these things where even if it stopped tomorrow we would have a very long-term tail the tail of the curve of tyranny is much longer than the virus itself so it is possible like uh, some people have pointed out we come to a more optimistic turning point with the virus in the next few days that we see uh, maybe a, a leveling off naturally because so many more people have gotten this like like uh, like myself my wife our driver who, who are you know relatively healthy moderate symptoms and it's just kind of a funky flu maybe we found out that way more people than we thought have this there's no stopping it and we like I, I really believe that what I am advocating here is what it, we are going to generally be forced to do anyway by circumstance we are going to be forced to let people go back to work we are going to be forced to help isolate uh, people who need medical help who are vulnerable we are going to be able to focus on getting them logistical support and self quarantine and medical care to people who really need it I think that's inevitable so it's all the more important then that we make sure that we flatten the curve of tyranny flatten the curve of martial law and it could keep getting a lot worse and this is where I don't know where things are going and this is what genuinely scares me is that it could keep getting worse I think it's unlikely I think we're gonna see a leveling off but here's an important distinction in terms of how does this curve behave in the long run right even here I have this you know if we turn the corner here that there will be a, a general lessening uh, uh, of that bad stuff effect uh, all the economic repercussions the curtailments of freedom the lack of civil liberties that it's just gonna taper off but if it gets a lot worse it's gonna be different it's not going to be uh, you know a, a steady plateau as, as we talked about before yes it, it will continue for some time and and I'm gonna jump ahead here on the like bring it in from the timeline how does that government power come down it, it comes down in steps you know, maybe, all right, so it gets to peak tyranny, it gets to here, and we go, hey, the lockdowns, that's not going to happen, and it comes down. But then everything else stays in place. And then maybe we have to have a fight about mandatory quarantines. You know, maybe we have to have a fight about, you know, what businesses are, are, are essential, and then it comes down. But each one of these steps down represents a major fight because governments don't take on power that they intend to give up willingly. So the longer we let this go out of control, the curve of tyranny, the worse things get, the harder it's gonna get to scale things back when we get past this phase. So I want everybody paying attention to this, spreading this message, making sure that we don't let the curve of tyranny get out of control pay attention let's be ready to turn this corner when the time comes like I said we're about here I think it's gonna keep going for a while and I, I think as people wake up as that curve of anger passes the curve of fear and people are like mm, no this was an unnecessary overreaction the elephant being scared by a house cat into jumping off a cliff is now going to be ready to fight back against the the people who have misled us into accepting all of these policies so if I had to make a prediction I don't think it's gonna get this bad I don't think we're gonna get to this point of full martial law lockdown tyranny I don't think we're gonna get to forced vaccinations but what's unpredictable is where we go from here and I think maybe somewhere in in between here we're gonna see it, 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 it continuing to increase we're gonna see a bit of a leveling off and it is gonna come down and then we are gonna have to fight it if we ever want to get it back to normal and this is sort of my realistic trajectory of where this goes but this the difference between this and this think about the visual area the the sort of grid squares in this curve the volume of this uh, in terms of negative impact and suffering is a lot less than if we get it to this point and it keeps going like this this could be 
10 times the long-term negative repercussions for freedom, for prosperity, for safety, just for, for security and our ability to provide for each other as Americans to have a productive economy. This negative impact, if we let it go all the way up to here, could continue for uh, you know, very, you know, I, I'm optimistic in the long run. I think there's a there's an awakening happening, and especially out of this, um, while there is this conspiracy happening in the open, uh, I, I don't think there's some master plan. There's no, you know, single person going, ah, here's the coronavirus. Activate red team, activate blue team. All right, to get the media on doing this and get the death counters on TV and get the bailout. There's no centrally planned conspiracy around the coronavirus response. There are just a lot of uh, people in a position to do evil things and take advantage of the opportunity, not letting this crisis go to waste. And in a sense, if, if, if you see the state as this, you know, anthropomorphized monolith personality, okay, well, then maybe they went too far and they didn't realize that if they try some bullshit like this, even at, like this, where we are now, if they try this in the age of the internet, they're not going to get away with it. The people are going to be able to call bullshit and fight back effectively and make sure that we don't go down this path. And what I hope is that if we turn the corner soon, if, 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 if we, you know, and I'm maybe being more optimistic, there, I, I think this momentum, you know, I, I do think it is going to get, you know, to somewhere at, at least here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get significantly worse before it gets better. But there is the possibility that if we really have an awakening, we could take this all the way down into negative territory. That's the potential that we have here and the opportunity with this moment to really fight back, turn this into a teachable moment and say, look, we don't need government in a health crisis like this. It's going to make things worse. Let's get them out of the way. So the next crisis, if it comes about, the next you know viral issue that we deal with, we don't have to fight the government while we're fighting off the virus to let us strengthen our collective consciousness and our collective herd immunity to tyranny while we come out of this stronger than we were before at least cooler calmer heads prevailing will get us a better scenario that is what i'm hoping for all right any uh, any more comments you want to get to sam before we wrap this up what time are we getting at here 43 minutes in and we do have we do have power. We have lights. We have a curtain. Uh, so Stephen Douglas says, I think you're being optimistic. This is unprecedented. The global preparations for this are ominous. Hashtag pandemic. Okay. So I want you to read that again because the wording that he used there yeah. first had me thinking, is he talking about the virus? Am I going to have to refute this? I don't know. But just read it one more time. Okay. So let's, let's think about this in terms of government. I think you're being optimistic. This is unprecedented. Unprecedented. Okay, so the government responses. Yeah. I, I, I wrote it down verbatim. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we so. can correct people's grammar when reading, you know, internet comments uh, that are obviously done on smartphones with, uh, with, with spelling mistakes. So... I don't think I, so. Again, I don't think this is being overly optimistic, and that we've we've already come this far. It's going to get at least worse. It could go much worse. It could go slightly worse. It could get a lot better. I'm not calling it uh, one way one way or another. I think that's a very uh, realistic perspective. But in terms of you know my prediction that it's not going to get uh, you know it's not going to get to this level. It's going to level off before it gets really bad. Um, this is precedented. They're, they're, they're having lots of examples of this. And the, the best examples that we see uh, come from uh, wartime. And, you know, think back to, uh, well, this is, I'm, I'm gonna break Goddard's law here, right? And go straight to talking about Hitler and the Nazis. But it was the burning of the Reichstag in uh, what, I don't remember what year it was, but that, that Hitler uses the excuse to consolidate power. 9-11, uh, most recently here in the United States. Uh, Gulf of Tonkin is a, is a completely fabricated event to lie us into war. Uh, this is precedented. Um, it is a little unusual being centered around a virus, but even in that sense, it's not unprecedented because we've had these crises before with uh, you know the, the flu pandemic of 1918, 1958, and 1967 that we at least have relatively modern historical perspective on and, and a, a decent understanding 
of the statistics and the response and the path of, of those viral outbreaks. So I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic in the historical sense because I see humanity progressing still. I see the trend of us getting less violent over time, not being upended by this event. If anything, uh, I'm, I'm more optimistic in the, uh, the trend of what government is able to use as an excuse that, uh, you know, takes everybody's attention. And in, the, in that sense, it's, um, we look at, uh, you know, the global war on terror, you know, they, they were able to use the Gulf of Tonkin as an excuse for large scale war. And then with the, the global, why are you drinking beer right now? Because we're talking we're about doing corona. a live stream. Guinness is not the cure for <laughs> coronavirus, babe. What are you, why? I didn't get to celebrate you're, St. Patrick's So you're Day. celebrating St. Patrick's Day rather than being health. I just told everybody <laughs> we're being healthy because we might have coronavirus and you're sitting here in the middle of the afternoon drinking Alcohol your beer. Alcohol kills really? bacteria. Really? Alcohol, yeah, this is a virus, not bacteria. Well. Okay. So, um. Don't you judge me. Right. Well, now you're gonna make, you're gonna make me sicker longer, right? Yeah, yeah live right. and let live. Okay. So, any other, uh, any other comments or, or headlines we should get to before we wrap this up? Um, one headline I did want to get to is that the CEO of the Intercontinental Exchange that owns the New York Stock Exchange sold his own stock ahead of the coronavirus market meltdown for millions. Yeah, a lot of that. Insider trading, manipulation. No uh, surprise. Uh, it's a calculate. I mean, it, uh, I, I saw it coming. You know, I, and I, I'm not the right. guy on Wall Street, but, you know, I, I, I was saying, shit's about to drop right now. Yeah, see, th I think... With the historical perspective that we all have with the internet, the average person, and obviously David, you are way above average in many, many ways, but in terms of paying attention to the economy and being an expert on economics, uh, you're only a little above average because of your political acumen, but even someone in your situation is able to see, wow, yeah, we saw this coming, yeah, this is predictable, and, and I think the average American who's paying attention to the news is able to read behind uh, between the lines to a certain degree and and say yeah this is this is bullshit on the lighter side dallas zoo began sharing behind the scenes footage and educational videos on social media using the hashtag bring the zoo to you so that kids at home can look at zoos and aquariums oh well that's nice nice little silver lining i, I think uh, we didn't really get into this enough but there is one great silver lining of the inclination towards homeschooling there are a lot of parents out there who uh, who are able to step up in this time, both financially and logistically, for whatever reason, and and realizing that uh, you know a lot of the advantages in, in, in homeschooling outweigh the advantages of you know government provided daycare for your kids while they uh, poison their minds with propaganda and teach them what to think rather than how to think, and the experience of being homeschooled is uh, you know really positive one along with the general trend of us seeing what can be done remotely and while I think uh, Arvin Vorha is certainly overreacted to this by not coming to events maybe he's a little extra germaphobic himself he doesn't want to get corona now when he can get it later uh, but he did point out in a great post today that uh, this has solved a lot of problems in China with smog that the lockdowns have, have done uh, you know have moved things in a, in a really positive direction for people's long-term health by reducing that. And if you think about it, this is something that we were progressing to naturally that we're now accelerated in our progression to in a positive way. You know, why have this, you know, backwards race every day to see who can get to their shittier jobs the fastest? It's it's really absurd that we're still doing uh, in so many jobs in person that can be done remotely. And, and that shift is definitely a positive one. But there are some downsides to this shortly, and Sam was pointing out earlier that there are a lot of people who have children who are special needs, who were really dependent on uh, you know, school-based systems, both for, for meals, for, for the daycare aspect, if not the educational component of that. And there are a lot of people who need that help. So if you can, again, it's an important time, not because of the virus, because of the crackdown, that we really strengthen our communities and we look out for people who, who might need just that little extra help to, to be comfortable to take care of their kids. So um, any other headlines that, that we wanted to cover today? Emissions over China and Italy 
plunge. And the emissions. Venice, emissions. Like, oh, emissions. Yes. That, yeah. What I was saying. Venice about China Canal especially. water is actually clear again for the first time in years, with dolphins actually showing up. Wildlife has returned to roam in all the tourist hot spots, and the few people who are out and about get to go up and actually like hang out with them and take pictures and stuff. Yeah, it's almost like coronavirus was Mother Nature's way of saying, hey, 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 people, you, the humans, take a step back for a minute, see what you're fucking up, and you're going to see how much better things can be afterwards. So, yeah, there is a lot of sort of positive perspective coming out of that as well. um, on On a sadder note, two of the three last white giraffes on Earth were slaughtered by poachers in Kenya. Just another underreported story. Yep. Um, the actor and singer, the gambler Kenny Rogers, died at 81 years old. Not from coronavirus. Not from corona. <laughs> he was uh, in hospice for a while, and it was from natural causes. Well, corona is a natural cause, unless it's a bioweapon. But I don't believe that. Time will tell. North Korea test fires two projectiles into the sea off the eastern coast. Hmm. How's North Korea doing in all this? We're a very isolated country, right? Like, yeah, we're only really seeing graphs on South Korea. If, yeah, if we want to be worried about people who are in social isolation, it doesn't get more <laughs> isolated than the Democratic Republic of North Korea, where there is a general lockdown all the time on civil society. Empty streets are the uh, norm there, and uh, severe limitations on international uh, economic relationships with the people of North Korea. Are, are they suffering in this, or are they just like, do they not even have it? Uh, did, did they get spared? There's no grass does anybody know? Find. Uh, does, if anybody's watching this, and uh, you want to look it up for me, we'll be watching the comments the next few minutes. How's North Korea doing? I, how did I miss that? You know? Yeah, I've only seen graphs on South Korea, China, and Italy in the U.S. Yeah, and it's basically th- them praising... The, the South Korean response for being, uh, you know, especially um, draconian and effective. By the way, as this was happening just now, I just got a text popped up on my screen from none other than Arvin Vora himself, who says absolutely he wants to do a debate. And, and for those of you who didn't catch it, I did announce, I should have put this at the beginning of today's show. Um, we did announce that we are inviting all of the other Libertarian Party presidential candidates for one-on-one debates. Um, especially since, uh, as libertarians, a lot of you are stuck at home and want to see yeah. libertarians throw down. So for the details, if you want to see that, it's uh, on my Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Posted at all three places. Now, I mentioned it on TikTok as well, of course. So they're going to be hour-long debates or, or more, um, really more friendly, casual discussion-type conversations where, you know, rather than, than, than structured debates. So they're going to be a lot more fun, a lot more lively exchange, but to make sure that it has a sort of fairness about it, we're going to have uh, my wife Sam here doing the timekeeping to make sure that, that uh, both candidates in every debate gets roughly equal time. So we've got confirmations from Mark Whitney was first on this. He when we get tagged, I love he's him. got a great Facebook. Team. It was his son, his son Ellerton. Got to hand it to him. His two sons, you know, and it's like that's his platform. I'll make fun of him too, you know, like, hey, I have two sons who are great entrepreneurs. I'm a, I'm a felon. Elect me for president. Family. No, he has it. He it, has it, a it is. It is. Family. It, thank you. No, it is true. He has a great family. Um, his, his wife uh, Julie, and his sons. Is it Chris and Ellerton? Right, um, I think the other one, so, Christopher. But don't quote me on yeah, that. but uh, Ellerton texted me right away after tagging Mark Whitney in that post. So, thank you, uh, Ellerton, and and congratulations to Mark. You've got a great team backing you up there. Um, you know, gotta hand it to him for that. Uh, but so so we have confirmations from Mark Whitney, Brian Ellison, Arvin. Uh, I got a text message back from Lincoln Chafee saying that he was he was open to it. Asked to check in to confirm with uh, Christopher Thrasher, his campaign manager, uh, Libertarian political operative extraordinaire and and i'm sure that uh chris thrasher will do the right thing he doesn't want chafee to be left out of this little round of debates for the libertarian party presidential primary process um who else did we hear back from let's see i should i've I've gotten i see i very open oh i turned my camera around excuse me i hope to god you did not show me yep you're in it now no how do i turn it back around do I double just double okay there we go all right hey yeah david waving too um 
Yeah, uh, now you guys know what Sam is wearing, not what her face looks like. Shut up. Um, no, no, cut your face out. Thank so, oh, Max Abramson is confirming, I think, although I don't see all of his text message here. Um, Brian Ellison confirmed also. Sam Robb also confirmed. Yay. So, very exciting. We're going to have a great round of debates, although just found out that our bug out spot may have bailed on us. <laughs> oh, bad news here, babe. It looks like uh, our friend in Texas uh, says we can't be there. So we are looking now potentially for another place to park, a bug out spot in North Texas. Um, all right. Sorry about that little little glitch in the broadcast there. Unlike uh, Governor Cuomo doing his daily lives, I don't have a government-sponsored studio and someone else watching my text messages while we're doing this. Um, I so do everything else but that. We have Sam here. It's my production assistant yeah. doing everything Sorry, else. Sorry, guys. I'm all, I'm all you get. All right. So we're going to have a very exciting series of debates next week. Fantastic. Get ready for that. And uh, we, we are ready to wrap up here. So any other, any last thoughts, any comments? Is it? Do, do, do we hear from anybody else who's experienced something who, who thinks they might have corona? Chris Cole has just put out a comment and uh, requesting that you guys email Adam at Adam at thefreedomline.com if you've been exposed, tested positive, and recovered. We want to hear your story and we'll touch down on it tomorrow depending on how many emails we get. The last thing I did want to touch down on was reminding you guys that virtual doctors and pharmacies are a real thing. I use them when I have a cold sore outbreak because nobody wants to see that. Um, telemedicine is a company that's on the uprise. It's also called telehealth, but Medicare coverage is limited. If you have no insurance, it's $75 flat rate for an urgent care visit. Um, it's 24 seven for you to be able to talk to a doctor, $69 for a dermatologist. Uh, Live Health Online is a doctor 24 seven, regardless, and then the webcam you, it's over your phone. Um, Plush Care, Hey Doctor, and Push Health are prescription refills that I've used for a flat rate of $35 no matter what, and that's without my insurance. So that's something that I do want everybody to keep in mind. Instead of flooding the doctor's offices and the hospitals for the flu and the cold, and you still need medication refills, like albuterol for inhalers, or you know anybody with special needs children, there is still a way to get that care without having to go into places that have a shit ton of sick people. Absolutely. Thank you for that. And it is worth noting that the shift into virtual medicine, into remote medicine and doctors, uh, I mean, this is like doctors now are able to practice across state lines. Like what? You weren't able to do that before. Government was stopping that. How much less effective is our healthcare industry because of these government regulations that are being stripped out of the way out of necessity in this crisis? And to see that there's a shift to, you know, much greater efficiency in the healthcare industry is a, is a really positive uh, effect that we're seeing as a result of this. So thank you, Sam, for all those notes, encouraging everybody, if you, whatever, like, even if you have a normal healthcare issue that you might go in to see a doctor for, yes. especially now, this is a really important time to consider getting care remotely one way or another. Yeah and they are open 24 7 these doctors are fantastic and you can even pick a specific doctor on some of these apps um, and it shows their credentials and a picture of them and reviews from real patients there you go all right any other news stories we didn't get to I know there's so much to cover and so many things that i've been reading i've been obsessively just i've been uh you know i've been on drudge and twitter uh you know a lot the last few days Trying to keep up, making sure that you know my perspective is well informed, considering all these angles. Uh, if I'm going to be talking to the public at a time uh, of crisis, even if it's an artificial crisis, uh, that, that I'm you know making sure that I'm well informed, that I have a good sense of, of what's going on uh, around the world and all these different stories, it's impossible to keep up with everything. So if you guys want to help, you know we're going to be doing these live streams uh, at least for the the time being. I, I kind of like this format. We might just transit transition this into the the daily you know, presidential campaign press conference for now. Uh, people seem to be digging this, so please give us your feedback. Stay engaged in the comments. Um, I, you know, I love I love having Sam and, and David here. David is also reading the comments. David, anything in the comments that jumped out to you today? Um, no, it's just that Joey and I were having a, a, a nice conversation. She says I'm better to look at than you are. Oh, and, and that's I, true. I reminded them, all the uh, uh, other commenters to uh, brush their teeth every time they wash their hands. 
Is that a thing or is that just no, a vermin supreme thing? That's, yeah. Mandatory <laughs> toothbrushing. See, if I was president, I'd be better than Vermin Supreme because we'd have mandatory hand washing and mandatory toothbrushing. Oh. And I'm going to take all of your guns away and then give you better guns. I'd, I'd, I'd have a mandatory clean socks. <laughs> mandatory sock washing so the bus socks doesn't smell. Lead to uh, stinky feet and stinky shoes. Um, I do want to add this last thing. It's a new study published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It was earlier this week, penned by researchers from other institutions like Princeton, the University of Cali, uh, Center of Disease Control and Prevention. Um, they tested to see how long the virus would last on various surfaces, and these are the results. It's in the air is three hours. Plastic is up to 72 hours with a longer half-life than any other material. Stainless steel is up to 72 hours. Copper is up to four hours. I don't know who's out here just touching copper. And cardboard is up to 24 hours. Um, for my friends, my holistic friends, that notice there's no hand sanitizer everywhere, because I personally like to keep a little bottle in my purse at all times regardless, tea tree oil and rosemary and everything also help, and aloe vera gels make great hand sanitizer as well. So You can also urinate on your own hands. Urination is also a thing, too. If you run out of sanitizer, <laughs> please don't, don't pee on your hands. Definitely don't um, touch people. Don't pee on your hands. Thank you. Don't pee on your hands and shake my hand, that's for sure. Um, but no, these different service things, the reason this is important in terms of understanding the spread is that we are doing uh, you know, a lot of different things to, to make things more sanitary right now. Um, and of course, if it's on cardboard less time than on a hard surface, it's because it's drying out faster. And we know that just like with any virus, um, it, it's, it's more, uh, you know, it, subject to UV rays will also kill it. All the normal things that you can do to yep. control a virus. And again, this is uniquely viral, but not uniquely destructive or more viral than things we've seen in the past. But the airborne thing is what is uh, unique and, and somewhat concerning what's driving the higher virality of this. So if it's, if it's airborne for three hours, that means that if you were on an airplane with someone breathing recirculated air, you were exposed. Yeah. yeah. And that was probably the, uh, you know, the biggest threat. And for people uh, shying away oh, from totally. airplanes in general, you know, that might be, uh, you know, a whole other thing that hasn't been discussed uh, sufficiently because the government in responding to this, I mean, Trump's travel ban to Europe, absurd. absurd. Well, if you're, if you're an American coming home, you can come home and bring the virus because everybody on that plane is going to get it. And that's, that's uh, or at least likely to be exposed. I should be using precise, reassuring language, not the sensationalist bullshit of the mainstream media. Uh, not that you're going to get it, but that you've been exposed if you've been on an airplane with, with, uh, with someone with it. And... If there was, uh, you know, a way to control that, we could deal with that in a rational way and say, look, if you're going to fly, you're going to be exposed or don't fly. And, and we might see, you know, more of a rational shutdown of the airline industry rather than a knee jerk reaction where people are still trying to fly and they don't know this because this information didn't get out soon enough. And this is stuff that medical experts have known for at least months now. I mean, yes. from the time this blew up in China, they've been studying the, uh, the contagion factor mm -hmm. of, of this virus and all the different ways that it's transmitted and that it was airborne caused uh, a bit of a freak out rather than a rational response. And there's still a lot of people who don't know that this is airborne. That if you're just in a room with someone, there's a good chance if they cough that you're gonna get, uh, you're gonna get exposed to this. So, I think that's all we got time for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, mwah, peace and love, y'all. Stay cool, calm, and collected. Calmer heads will prevail in the long run. We are going to get through this, and we are going to keep the great human dance forward to a voluntary society going.